Hey everyone, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We're gonna bring a new series to you today. We're gonna talk about plateau busting things that you can do. A lot of little things that, that sneak into the diet or the process of prep and they can make a huge difference. So Adam, the first thing that you brought up was chewing gum, artificial sweeteners, that, that controversy never seems to go away. And I have kind of a neutral stance. I, I know there have been some studies, I don't think they're necessarily the best or conclusive studies that show they probably don't impact diets or, or weight loss, fat loss. But I, I gotta say, there are some people where it makes an undeniable difference. So I, I'd love to hear your perspective on that. Yeah, it's hard because we're getting into antidotal evidence with just uh, being coaches ourselves. But I've literally seen it where I've had clients choose 7 to 14. Sometimes you get clients that do more than that. Uh, they choose so much gum, you even cut it back in half. Because you can't just have people, you know, 0 to 60, uh, a long habit like that. And I, I've not even moved their macros. And I've seen a really incredible change when someone was you know, stalled out for four or five weeks. And I've made moves and I couldn't figure out why. And uh, that's and that's where this series is really important. These are all things we look into where we know a client should be losing and they're not. On the other hand, I've also had clients consume tons of things. I've seen the Walden Farms in their stories, and I I don't pick on them too much about it if they're actually are losing, but I do make them aware that that might be too good to be true. And if you stop losing weight, that's probably going to be the first thing I would say that should go. Yeah, you're exactly right in that the anecdotal evidence is not the best way to study something. But I'll tell you a couple of the initial stories I had with clients. And one is, you know, just a sweet little old lady, not a competitor who was losing a pound a week, everything was great, and then just hit this plateau and the plateau just would not yield. We got two, three, four weeks into this. And, and finally, I just brought her back into my office, and I said, look, is there anything you've been doing differently? And she said, yeah, once I you know, hit that level of success, I started drinking diet soft drinks. I've never done that, but I just I thought it'd be good for taste, flavor. And she was increasing, I mean, she had gotten up to like five a day, five Diet Cokes a day. And I said, okay, let's just, just humor me, let's cut that out, and immediately she started dropping. Uh, went right back to normal. And she said she felt better, you know, less hypoglycemia, that kind of thing. So then I had a competitor who was incurring the same thing. And come to find out, he was putting, I, I think at the time it was almost 30 packets of aspartame on his food, in his coffee, on his oatmeal, all this stuff. Same thing. We, we went cold turkey because he was absolutely plateaued, stuck. It was, it was amazing. This is a pro bodybuilder. And uh, Instantly, he lost three to five pounds that week, and over the next month, he lost 17 pounds, just, just bloat, water, body, just all of this stuff. And I'm like, gosh, there is something to this. So every time I run into a sticking point with a client and I get down to this level, I have never had a scenario where bringing artificial sweeteners down did not help. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I will say this, you know, you're going to have your ectomorphs that get lean no matter what they do. But when you're looking at those clients that really do struggle with fat loss quite a bit, this stuff becomes even more so important when they're just already having a difficult time losing. Well, the, the reason I said that I don't think the studies right now are completely valid is that they're all correlational. They'll give rats or people a certain amount and say, okay, you lost weight, you didn't, or even a survey study. You know, here are the people who say they, they consume artificial sweeteners and they seem to lose just fine, but nobody studied the real biochemical mechanism here. And, and I think it really does have to do with insulin because when you consume something sweet, as soon as you just get that first taste on your salivary glands your, or your, your taste buds, your body starts secreting insulin for, and digestive fluids, enzymes to digest and assimilate that. And so even if there are no calories in that, more insulin starts creating that process of, of at least moving away from fat uh, mobilization and to fat storage, even if there's nothing there. So I, I, I do know that they have tested that and they just don't seem to think there's a correlation between aspartame or, or artificial sweeteners and insulin. 
But I, I've got to say, I just th there just has to be more studies done on a broader base and different doses to to ever convince me because I've I've seen it work too much in the opposite direction. Yeah, when we're seeing it as often as there is, there definitely needs to be some more research done. Yeah, and, and I'm like you. If somebody's losing fine without it or without taking it out, totally fine. But it is something at least to investigate if you're really trying to break through some plateaus if you think you should be losing faster. So, uh, again, I, I, it's not conclusive to me, but I think it's still a controversy that is definitely not settled and, and should be investigated person by person. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, well, stay tuned. We're going to go through a few more of these small plateau busting tips that may help you just get yourself over the top.